So, guess who's back? We're back. Back again. Welcome to the new and improved amusing show. Now in full motion video. And Technicolor. That's right. So this is what we've always looked like over the past 20 episodes. Except all you could see before was like a black screen. Or if you were watching on YouTube, I guess it was like that splash screen. We were able pretty good. Yeah, we were able to do it justice. Yeah. But now uh, we have to live up to the legacy of that splash screen and present something a bit more dynamic. So, what have we been up to since we completed season one? A you did Squirrel Fest. We did Squirrel Fest. Okay, why don't you talk about that for a minute? Squirrel Fest was a grand old success. Uh, had a whole blurry now. <laughs> it's just a blur. 22 bands doing sound on Saturday for 12 hours and then not sleeping and then wake up early and doing it again. And like, it was a lot, but all the bands had a good time, all the people had a really good time. Um, everyone who played wants to come back play again, so that's a good sign of success, I think. Right. Now this was Squirrel Fest number two. Number two. Number two. So, is there anything that you learned from the first time that you, you know, didn't want to repeat for the second time, and anything that you picked up from the second time that you don't want to see happen? Surgery. Your organizational structure. Ah, there it is. There's a, there's a big one. So, yeah, more a stricter hierarchy within the organization. <laughs> And uh, that should help things out. You gotta tighten that regulatory noose a little bit. <laughs> Very nice. Just don't hang yourself with that noose. Yeah, for sure. That's the biggest worry. Nice. Uh, what have I been up to since uh, our final episode? Well, uh, I'm a very boring person, actually. <laughs> like, whenever somebody asks me, what have you been up to lately, I can never answer the question. Because I do things that I find interesting to me, but I always get the subconscious that's, mentality that's that no one's gonna think it. What's you that? got damn close to the world record in Super Mario 2. That is true. I, I got. Well, I guess uh, the lost levels in the U.S. Yeah. yeah, he's talking about the Japanese version of Super Mario Brothers 2, which we know in the U.S. as Super Mario Brothers: The Lost Levels. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, it's available for download on the Wii and the Wii U, I believe now too. And you can play it in Super Mario All Stars for the Super NES and for the Wii. Uh, the world record, according to Twin Galaxies, is like four million points, and I think I came up with. 3,333,000 or something like that. Oh, you're like, you're like 100,000 off. I don't know if it was that close. It was, it was pretty close, but... Uh, have you ever been to that Twin Galaxies website? No. Okay. Did you ever see the movie The King of Kong? Yes. Okay. Well, Twin Galaxies is heavily represented in that movie, and quite frankly, I don't think they get portrayed in a very flattering light. Like Actually, Apparently, they had a lot of problems with that. The people that were in the film, um, after it was put together, was re-edited to make it seem like they were... You know, the egos and the attitudes and all that. Apparently, they're actually pretty good friends. Typical documentary. Yeah, so it's reshot to make them look like this. Of course. That's the way <laughs> That's the way all movies are. There has to be a story there. I mean, it yeah. wouldn't be just much if it was just two guys playing Donkey Kong yeah. back and forth. But anyways, <laughs> for those of you not in the know, Twin Galaxies is a website that tracks, like, high scoring and times in video games, right? So I looked at what the high score for Super Mario Brothers 2, the Lost Levels, whatever you want to call it, and it was four million, something like that. But they have such a strict, like, rule set. Like, honestly, a lot of the rules that they had for the uh, that particular game seem like they were really, like, tightening, uh, like, a stranglehold on the player to play the game in a way that you probably wouldn't typically play. Like, there are elements in the game that are in the game. Like, you can get infinite one-ups. It's been a part of every Mario game since the beginning of time, basically. And uh, they had a strict policy of you can't do that trick. And I'm thinking to myself, well, why not? It's part of the game. If you're able, it's difficult enough to pull off. If you're able to pull it off, why can't you take advantage of that? It just, you know, it sets you apart from other players who probably wouldn't be able to pull that off. So I didn't agree with a lot of their rules and their policies, but nevertheless, uh, despite that, I was able to net over three million points. So yay for me. How hard is that? That's a stupid game. That's a very stupid game. It's true. Do you know the backstory behind that particular game? Um, the fact that it was not released in the U.S. because they didn't think we could handle it. Exactly! They actually thought that American players, or North American players in this particular instance, uh, would not uh, appreciate a high difficulty game. But the game, as I understand it, was designed for people who had already mastered the original Super Mario Brothers. It's a true sequel. Yeah, or so, an expansion, I guess. Yeah, exactly, expansion. So why wouldn't you up the difficulty and make it as hard as possible to keep people coming back for more? What do you think? Like, if they had released that game instead of the Super Mario Brothers 2 that we know of now, where you pick up the vegetables and you throw them and things like that, if they had released the Japanese version over here, 
do you think it would have killed the series? Like, do you honestly think the difficulty level, which is exceedingly high, would have, you know, killed the Mario series in North America? I guess in a roundabout way, yes. Just because, like, a lot of, like, the characters and ideas about Mario would actually inherit it from that game. I suppose that's true too. Because like if that was gone, then like a shy guy, I think. Yeah, the shy guy, guy was definitely gone. Like, there'd be a, a lot of things that <clears throat> no part of Mario would be just gone. Yeah. yeah, that's true too. Um, Birdo was introduced in Super Mario Brothers too, uh, but there are a lot of things that uh, you know were introduced that never reappeared again, like uh, Wart, the final uh, boss of the uh, game. We never heard from him ever again. It was all a dream. It was all Spoilers. a dream. Spoilers. <laughs> I don't know, it came out in 1988, so I'm pretty sure it's it's okay to openly talk about the ending of a game like that. Actually, uh, now that I think about it, War did make a reappearance, just not in a Mario game. In The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, he plays uh, Mamu, or is Mamu in Link's Awakening, the Game Boy uh, color game, or game original game. Okay, so I didn't play that. You did not play that one? No. We'll check that out. It's a special cameo from War from Super Mario Bros. 2 in... Link's Awakening for the Game Boy. Actually, there's a number of Mario cameos in that particular game. Uh, Goombas make an appearance in that game. I think the Cheat Cheeps, which are the fish, make a little cameo appearance here. Smash Bros. before Smash Bros. Eh? Just throw all the characters in there? Uh, yeah, there's just, there's just a lot of them. Even the Chain Chomp is in the game. Really? Yeah, you actually have to use the Chain Chomp. Like, Link befriends the Chain Chomp, and it eats some of the enemies to allow him access to one of the dungeons. So. Link's just a nice guy. I mean, everybody loves Link, and they're ready to befriend him at a moment's notice. So you've been to the movies lately? Yes. What have you seen? Recently seen, um, Planet of the Apes. Actually, I don't even know the title. Is that the Rise, or the... I don't even know. It's Dawn. Dawn, Dawn. thank you. Rise was the last one. Yes. And I have not seen uh, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes yet. I did see Rise, so why don't you... Because I, I, don't, I don't really care about spoilers, so why don't you get, openly discuss your impressions of the film? Not even whether I'm talking about the film itself, it was a great movie, but just how it was done, I was really impressed with it. Just being a direct sequel, mm-hmm. um, I'm just used to at this point, like, you know, The Hobbit or this series or that series, where you wait the whole movie to this pinnacle moment, and then it ends, to be continued, and that's it. But, like, you know, the first one, The Rise, was a complete film on its own, isolated. And there's only little timbits of this, the plague backstory, where there's the plague spreading, all that, and that's, like, kind of... Paramount, the second film. The whole film takes place eight years later, where the whole entire side is wiped out because of this play. So it's a major plot point in the second film that's only, like, kind of loosely touched on in the first film. Which I thought was a really nice touch, instead of having to, like, hammer this play home in the first movie and then have the second film, like, oh, yeah, the play. Mm. But, like, this whole backstory that didn't even exist in either film, which is Paramount, the second film even happened. I thought that was just really well done, because... Also, this one, too, ended as a completed film. Okay. I looked into it, they're working on a third one, I'm pretty excited. Of course. But, There's no cow that's too uh, dry to milk, I suppose. Yeah. But like then again, this, this movie was a complete film, even watching it on its own without seeing the first one. Because I saw the second one first, actually. So I saw that one first, and I was like, oh, this is a great movie. So I went back and watched The Rise Up. And, um, yeah, I was like, oh, this is really well done series. <laughs> and I thought another little cool like cameo shot. In the very beginning of um, The Rise Up, it's humans chasing monkeys through a forest catch him. Okay. The very beginning of the dawn of, it's monkeys chasing a herd of elk through okay. a forest hunting them. I thought that was a cool kind of show of how, you know, the monkeys became intelligent, evolved as a species, now they were the hunters. It's true. And just a direct reference, it's both the first same shots in both films. Mm-hmm. That was a cool touch. Nice. Yeah, I love it when films like harken back to like their earlier installments, mm-hmm. but at the same time there's a fine line that they have to sort of walk between like homage mm-hmm. and ripping off yeah. and so you're saying that it was very well done and it, yeah. it didn't rip it off it's just no, like, tipping the hat it's just kind of implied like it's not even yeah, it's not like shut down the throat like hey we did this last time it was just kind of you know just shot that way it's... right now of course it, it goes all the way back to the original planet of the apes film with charlton heston because i uh, try to rewatch every single i can't do couldn't it. do it I mean, oh, it's a classic. I moved 20 minutes in. The acting is just so horrendous. But, I mean, like, that's the way things were I back know. in the 60s. I just, I can't, I can't do it. I'll try again, just because I'm a big fan now. Okay. But it's just so brutal. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, I mean, it's true. If you look at a lot of, like, works of film and television from the 1960s, everything is just, like, over the top yeah. and obvious and 
can't be. And I guess that's just the way things were. They had to like really kind of spoon feed it to the audience. Like the original Batman TV series, oh, yeah. like that is so cartooned, but it works for that particular era. If you look back at it fondly now, like, oh, well, you know, that was the 60s, right? So maybe it's, it was part of the zeitgeist at the time, <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a break. We'll be back in just a minute. So I bet you're wondering why we're standing over here now. I'm a little curious. Like... Well, seeing as we're a video show now, I figured we might as well take advantage of that as much as possible. Like, do things we could never do before. So, with that in mind... We can't lie to people anymore. That's true. Yeah. All those times we said we were naked and we were actually not naked. Well, I was, but yeah, it's just the way I roll. Well, I guess we're lying to them right now by saying we weren't naked. <laughs> We'll just have to cut that note. <laughs> Anyways, uh, remember that last show we did? Uh, we played uh, the cl uh, the card game from The Price is Right. Yes. Uh, it seemed a little weird. No one could see what we were doing. Uh, but now they can. In a whole new bit that I'm calling The Price is Right Retirement Home. Exactly what Bob Barker used on the show. It was just a screwdriver with a microphone sock on the top of it. it. Absolutely, it was. You fool this all these It's just imitation, man. The magic of movies. So, in this bit, we are going to be playing a game on The Price is Right that they used to play, and now they don't, for legal reasons, so they won't sue us. Hmm. At least we hope. Knock on wood. So, uh, do you know anything about the game Hit Me? Actually, I don't. Okay, well, don't actually hit me, okay. as much as you're thinking about it, and I'm sure everyone out there is thinking about it, too. Uh, are you familiar with the game Blackjack at all? Like the actual card game? Yeah, the guess. actual card game, Blackjack. I okay. The object of Blackjack, obviously, for those of you who do not know, is to get within 21 without going over. Yep. Okay. Uh, we are going to play a version of Blackjack here, except the cards that you are going to draw are hidden behind these products here. So, uh, I have a regular deck of playing cards here. Why don't you go ahead and cut those in half? Okay. He's cutting the cards. Now, the top card that I'm going to draw here is going to be the whole card for the house. And the up card for the house is going to be a six. Okay. Okay. The house hits on 16 and draws on 17. See, there's a nice explanation there. And like I said, you're going to use your cards from these products here. So, let's hear about these products. Make your regularity tasty and delicious with 1.36 liters of Welch's Prune Juice. Pesky menstruation symptoms got you down? Eliminate them with 32 capsules of Midol. Use as directed. Spend too much time in the bathroom? Use Preparation H to soothe, cool, and medicate. Use as directed. Got a big date? Don't forget the Trojan condoms in one pocket and a wad of cash in the other. Scotty's tissues are great for that quick sneeze and any other unexpected bodily release. Oh, no. And finally, Lubriderm's Men's 3-in-1 Lotion. <laughs> with a convenient hand pump so your left one stays active as the right. Alright, so now you've heard the description of the products. Uh, as you can see here... No, oh, this is too close to home, I hope you're aware. I'm... Oh. <laughs> see, now you're being a little too honest with our viewers. As you can see here, the prices, most of these look like absolutely ridiculous prices yep. for these products. One of them is the exact price. If you can figure out which one is the exact price, you'll find an ace. And of course, in blackjack, an ace can be 1 or 11. One of them is the price multiplied by 10. So if you can find that one plus the one with the exact price, you'll have a 10 and an 11, which will give you 21 and an automatic win. The others are the prices multiplied by any number in the deck of cards from 2 to 10. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. So, which product do you want to start with? I'm going to have to go with the prune juice. The prune juice. Yes. Prune juice, it has a false price of $5.49. The real price is $5.49. You've got your ace. Look at that fancy hinging system. I know. Now, if you can find the one that is the price multiplied by 10, you are an automatic winner and you will win the mystery prize. Oh boy. Um. Um. Help him out, audience. Oh wait, we don't have an audience. 
Oh boy. People are screaming at you from their, their homes right now oh, saying, yeah. which product to choose? Oh, I don't use enough of these. <laughs> <laughs> Um, um, uh, e, uh, d, mm. My phone's ringing. He's got an incoming call. Perhaps oh. it's someone who can help you with this game. No, <laughs> man and papa. Oh. I'm not going to ask Gram and Grandpa are supposed to be watching The Price is Right. Actually, preparation age, they might be able to help out. <laughs> um, man, times ten? I can't look at any of these things and think that this is ten times the actual value. Uh, uh, the going with the Lubriderm. Yes. All right. There's the false price of thirty-seven forty-five. The actual price is seven forty-nine. So behind there you have a five. So now you have either sixteen or six, depending on what your next decision is. Do you want to stop or do you want to pick another card? Bust me. Uh, anything over 21 will bust you. Yeah, so is that like a, a 5? Yeah. You're looking for a 5 or anything below. You can quit at any time. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with my preparation H. Going with the preparation yeah. H. 1798 is the false price. The real price is 899. So you got a 2. You're still alive. So now you have 18. Or uh, eight or seven. I'm, I can't see from back here. Yeah, eight or eighteen. So, what I'm, do you want to do? I want to stay. You're going to stand on eighteen. Yeah. Very nice. Okay, the house has a six showing, and its hold card is sixteen, so it has to hit again. And it draws all oh, a five, and you're busted. The house has twenty-one. The deck is rigged. Uh, that is filthy. You cut the cards. How can it be rigged? Because you knew where it would cut them. Ooh. If only that were true. I'm sorry, but you don't win the bonus prize. So even if I got a 21, would I have lost? The uh, tie goes in favor of the player. Oh, okay. Sorry, you didn't win. You got beat by the house. What? I, I have to know. What is 10 times the value here? Well, mathematically speaking, it would be anything that ends in a zero, correct? No, it's not going to end in two cents. That is true. Like in this case, the my doll is $34, and the real price was $8.50. So you would have got a four from that, and the the uh, the condoms here seventy four ninety that one ends in a zero. So this one is seven forty nine. Uh, really? So there was the ten. Did you, that's the status of my love life. I don't know the price of a box of condoms. <laughs> well, while we ponder that interesting thought, we will take a break, and we will see you in a minute. Thank you for playing the Price Is Right retirement home. What, what would I have won? Fifty thousand dollars. Well, you didn't fare very well playing Hit Me on the Price is Right Retirement game, but I'm going to give you a chance at redemption. On our last four shows that we did when we were still a radio show, obviously, we tried playing Mario Kart 7 on the Nintendo 3DS, which was tricky for our audience especially because yep. they couldn't see what we were seeing. But it sounded like a good time. Right. But now That's we're... What matters. Yes. Exactly. Now we have the remarkable capability to actually show you what we are racing with. Uh, unfortunately, you have not acquired a Wii U yet, so we have no, to uh, yeah. we have to make do with the uh, the GameCube version Mario Kart Double Dash. If I make Dash. do, you mean celebrate? Because this is the greatest version of all time. I think a number of people are willing to debate you on that. Well, topic. I will debate till the end of the life. Okay. I mean, I like Double Dash fine. I'm not the greatest at it, but I think that might. I think make it's the greatest it... because I am the greatest at it. Oh. And therefore, it has to be awesome. I think that might make it more cool. Because every time I play it, it boosts my confidence. Fair enough. So let's give this a shot. Alright. The only there's only one way to play Mario Kart and it's at 150cc. Fair enough. Who are you going to choose as your team combination? I'm gonna choose my ah. Yeah. Controllers plugged into the console right, makes go. a big difference. Bam. You're going with Toad and Paratroopa? No. I'm going with Mario and Waluigi. But they're like our generous. You can't do that. It's Would you like replace Luigi? Like throw Luigi you out. <laughs> I'm going with the evil version of Luigi, obviously. I need that evil edge to overcome all adversity. Uh, let's go with the special cup. Sound good? Oh my 
god. Actually, I don't remember the controls. <laughs> this could be an epic disaster. <laughs> Starting off with the Wario Coliseum. I'm on top, Chris is on bottom. Which is, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> The controls feel so loose compared to like the later ones. Yeah, it is actually pretty arcadey. And there's already a blue shell? Oh, uh, that was launched by me, man. That's unnecessary. I've been I've been blessed with two awesome items right to start with. Blue shell followed by oh, star. Oh. And you almost ran into me. Drifting is super tricky in this game, because you gotta do this like left and right business with the... Yeah, if you ever notice when I play any other Mario game, I still do that. Yeah, this game. once you pick it up from this game, you just instinctively do it in all the other Mario Karts. Oh, and I just took the lead. I've been hit by a green shell, and a banana peel, and... I was told I'm banana peel. I just landed in the abyss. Battling with 8th place now. You've got 1st. So what's it like to be uh, top of the mountain? I, I uh, wouldn't know. You know, it's uh, it's kind of cool at first, but after a while I was kind of used to it. And you're like, oh, I don't know what the little people are doing. Oh. <laughs> Your dethroning is going to be epic. Oh, shit. I'm so used to the later versions where 8th doesn't mean you're in last place, but this <laughs> version, 8th, is definitely the last place. They didn't quite, uh, elastic the elastic mechanics. <laughs> yeah. Whoa! Interesting about this track, there are only two laps. It's just that extensive of a course. I just want to link with the, um... No! Mario Kart 7. Maybe some of the other ones in between, but the, uh... The single... single lap levels. Oh, like the sections ones? Yeah. Yeah, those are pretty good. That seems kind of weird too, but like, also, I guess, without the elastic mechanics... I can't see that working. If you got last in a single lap match. Now elastic mechanics, why don't you explain that to the uh, members of the audience who might not be familiar. That is the uh, fuck you, I hate you, Mario Kart mechanic. <laughs> and that's the, when you're in first place, you get blue shell constantly mechanic. And uh, basically, when you're in last place, you get better pickups, and there's actually, uh, your speed increases, uh, your acceleration increases, Generally, everything possible that can get you back near the front will happen. Um, and that's last mechanics. And it makes it so that this game is one of the most frustrating competitive games ever. Because it is so dirty that first place is never actually first place. Because you're most likely a bomb when you're in it. Oh yes. First is often a temporary situation. You I ended up with second. Close second. Oh my god. Yes. Oh no! At least they give you a blue shell to get the... Six there was like guys. six <laughs> mushrooms on the track there. So there's a perfect example of your uh, rubber band uh, mechanics at work. It's rubber bands, yes, but like you call it elastic. But you know, rubber band elastic. It's like the same thing, but different. You got it. So we've ended the first round. You have eight points, I have two. Next! Oh, home sweet home. I haven't played this game in like years. Uh, it's been a long time for me, too. And now we should have a Mario Tennis Off one day, too. I love that game. A Tennis Off? <laughs> Now, we were discussing this before we started rolling film uh, about Mario Tennis, as a matter of fact. I prefer the N64 one, you prefer the GameCube one. I never really played the N64 Actually, I did play the N64 one. I used to play it in uh, college all the time with uh, Greg. That is true. We all know Greg. Greg watches the show. Hi, Greg. Hey, Greg. Uh, but yeah, we, we used to school with that. And then I gave up with GameCube, and I was so excited. Yeah, I'm in mean, first, by the way. It's just saying. Me, yeah, I'm in mean, first, by the way, I'm Chris. That's what you sound like. Pretty good impression. Thank you. I'm afraid I'm suffering from what I'm calling now the, the ping pong ball, uh, ping pong ball, uh, I can't even talk right now. <laughs> yeah, you're getting schooled that hard. I'm getting really messed up here. By ping pong ball, uh, mechanic, I was getting bounced, like, left and right all over the screen. Or rather, the green shells were all over the screen trying to go out of their way to hit me. Because we're a Mario Kart 7 binge, I now have a bad habit that every time I hit something jumpy, I hit the jump button, trying to get a boost out of it. I was just thinking that too. Yeah, you want to get like that little extra speed boost that they introduced in the Wii version. But, uh, totally not happening. Nope. Oh, we, son of a bitch. We were ignorant morons back in 2003. We didn't have speed boosts from jumps. Or gliders. 
that is true. Or shinier graphics. Shinier graphics, obviously, if you compare side by side that memory card with this one, you can't say there's been like a massive progression in graphics. Well, it, look, it looks shiny. Fuck off, you piece of shit. <laughs> fucking. Is it a stupid game for stupids yet? No, it's still the greatest game of all time. Fair enough. Uh, well, at least the uh, at least Nintendo's managed to reach the HD uh, world now with the Wii U. Oh, they've reached it. Are they implementing it? Um, I would say so. I mean, having played Mario Kart 8 now, it's clearly the best looking game on the Wii U. Yo, on the Wii? The Wii, Wii U. Wow, that's no offense to the console. Is that the best? That I've seen thus far. Oh, wow. But then, of course, uh, the uh, the Wii U library is uh, stunted at best. Yeah, at I guess too, like overall Nintendo does have the more cartoony style. So I guess they'd be using like HD in a different, right, different sort of way than other ones. Right. There's less hard facing going on. There's no jaggies on the graphics like you would see. So, oh my fuck! Oh no! Oh no! We just pulled the show into the R rated. Damn. Yeah, a couple more f bombs. Ah! Fucking Christ Almighty! Fucking dinosaur, we're back to the fucking Stone Age. <laughs> oh, fuck this game. Oh, wow. Somehow I ended up with third. And I ended up in six. My, how the tables have turned. Yeah, have, actually. This game is frustrating. Well, Waluigi looks very pleased. Dude, that's why it feels fair. Like, I screwed up, and I got sixth place. It's I true. don't screw up, I get first place. So between the two of us, you have ten, and now I have eight. You're in third overall. Fourth for me. What if not one of us beat the computers? Or we just lose in general? I think humanity loses in general <laughs> when that happens. Now we're on to Bowser's Castle, the quintessential, one of the quintessential levels of any Mario Kart game. And somebody just tried to drop a fake item block behind oh, me. Oh, and don't... he shelled you anyways. Yeah, don't think I don't know who that was. Eat red shell. Oh, Eat fireball. Ooh. Eat hip check. Oh man, it's like impossible to avoid anything on this track. Mm. Oh, duh. oh, I thought you. Damn were it! I thought out. I saved that. God. Duh. Once upon a time, I tell you. Once Back in my no. day, I power slide ran all these corners. But you've grown lazy in your old age. Oh. Did you just run to that fireball? I may have. I'm running purely on adrenaline right now. I'm running purely on after save humanity. <laughs> For sure. Hey, don't count me out too quickly. I'm only in fourth place overall. I can still pull this out. I've taken the lead. First place, vying with Wario. Wait, how'd you sneak past me? I didn't... Instinct. Ah! Uh, Instinct. He can't teach that. Ah, uh, sure. Oh, my fucking... Oh, fucking fireball with fucking... Whatever. Fuck this. Fuck. I want to get a swear counter on screen for uh, all your ex expletives that you've dropped in the last you know, five minutes. There's a good chance I can do that. <laughs> Post movie magic. That's right. Post if it doesn't happen on this episode, at some future date, we will do a video game playing episode where Chris's entire dialogue will be nothing but swears. What if, like, under my breath muttering? Would those count? Or swear counts? Well, you would know it in, like, to yourself that you're swearing, but I don't think the home audience would pick up on that. Does YouTube have, like, a. your. Need to be an owl to watch us. Um, oh, someone has to flag you. Someone right? can flag it. All if right. you're flagging this video right now, you're a jerk. Stinky jerk. Does it tell you who flagged it? Because if it does, my god, we will find you, and we will spam your inbox. That's right. That's the greatest threat you can <laughs> give out on the internet. We will make your email public. Ooh, that's the biggest threat. You that's right. Out. And we'll let the bots do the work for us. There's a blue shell incoming. Yes, it is. Hopefully, it can be It's coming to me. No. Oh, dude, you're way the fuck up there. Yeah, I'm not catching up. Oh, I missed a mushroom. And there's a fucking fireball! Fuck that noise! Fuck that! 
certainly seems to be raining mm. terrible uh, feces all over Chris right now. God. Hey, I got first place. Mario is a true, like, master of the road. Not concerned at all about not wearing a safety belt. He is jumping in a moving vehicle. Look! Oh, Even spinning out doesn't matter to him. That's a grip. Now I've overtaken you in the lead here, 18 to 16. Yeah, what, oh, I, we're getting dummy by the computers. Well, as long as we, one of us makes it into the top three. Oh God, Rainbow Road. And now it's Rainbow Road. I think there's another two lap in this version. Um, no, it's a full oh, three. Wow. Here we go. It all comes down to this. Even. Oh. Whoever wins this will drink naught but champagne. Whoever loses will taste utter defeat. Power slide in the corner. It used to be like a power slide here. You gotta really guy the power slides in this game. I was not a power, power slide master are there. Dirty. Fuck off! <laughs> God. Oh, it's so hard to stay Damn. in the middle of the road here too. Oh my god! Ah! This is gonna be a very, very long match, unfortunately. Oh, jeez! Now, is Rainbow Road the only map that's technically been in like every game? Uh, no, Bowser's Castle has been in every Mario Kart game as well. In fact, in uh, the first game, Super Mario Kart. Was there variations of it? Yes. Okay, because it's reskinned a lot of it. Yes. And Super Mario Kart, the first game in the series, had uh, three Bowser Castle courses. And multiple Rainbow Roads? Just one Rainbow Road. Okay. How's Rainbow Road in 8? Did I see you play it? Or uh, play it? Rainbow Road in Mario Kart 8 has taken on a, a space station type motif. It's, it's rather unusual. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I'm not sure how I feel about it either. I think it needs to take on like a higher psychedelic motif, which is kind of what it is. Well, they remade the Nintendo 64 uh, Rainbow Road in Mario Kart 8, and that takes on a very heavy psychedelic oh, Okay, theme. so there's two Rainbow Roads. There are two Rainbow Roads you in that one. One, that? Is, one is a retro one, though. How many retro maps are in that game? Uh, the selection is somewhat um, pedestrian, if you ask me. There's oh, only, I beat the corner! The greatest retro map they put in Mario Kart 8, for my money, was uh, the remake of the Super NES one, the Donut Plains one, because it's a Super NES track in, like, glorious HD. It's pretty great. And I think... Oh, wow. That was interesting what just happened there. I sort of went through the road. That's about it. Or a feature! Damn. Certainly not a very pleasant... Uh, oh, shoot. Pleasant race for me so far. One thing I'd be shocked, and I was kind of interested to see them back at one point, is the feather. Mm, oh, the work, jumping feather, yeah. Yeah, they worked that back in They haven't touched on it since the first one, right? No. They just decided that was a horrible idea and nobody liked it? It so rarely needed to be used is probably why they got rid of it. I should remember M64, the uh, uh, Wario's Coliseum or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, off that intro, you can go like cheese jump over the border. That is true. Not, so, not exactly uh, what. Oh we, my god! Damn it! That's fucking such horseshit. Um, <laughs> not exactly what the programmers intended. Oh no! Don't forget, we're at your house, so go oh, ahead and throw that thing through the TV. It doesn't. Uh, it won't make a difference to me. True ah. story. Uh, we bowling. I have actually hucked my remote into a TV. I didn't break it. Oh man! But I, I got some good smashing going on. Yeah, back in the day. Fuck that road. Uh, back in the day. Um. It seems kind of silly to talk about Wii Sports after that. Oh no! Oh yeah, we played Wii Drink. Wii Drink? Yeah, so it was Wii Bowling, and uh, if you got a strike, I think someone had to do a shot. And then for every pin you knocked down, you had to hand out, and if you got a ball, you took a shot. It was I think pretty... we, should, we should film that. Oh, they don't drink it. That's true. But we can find a contestant out there who's willing there to do go. that. I think we should. We could. Or I insist that we tape a version of uh, Drinking Kong. Drinking Kong? We, we had mentioned that on a previous episode. I think that's that's absolutely required. There's no such ex drinking gaming experience as drinking golf. Oh no, my goodness. Well, now that we're a video show, it's something to look forward to. And now to. it's on tape, so we kind of have to. That's right. Oh my god! Sixth place! Oh! This oh. could be... Oh my god, you got eight. I did get eight. This might be my beat you, but no matter what, Mandy still leaves. God! That was brutal! I how the point system works. So who comes out uh, the victor here? 
I get no points. Oh, we've tied. That is such a Did we tie in last place? No. No, we tied third and fourth. So but they put me on top. They did put you on top. I'll take it. Fair enough. I still feel like a lousy defeat because, you know, we're undefeated. So we're not completely... The dong! I still need that. There's a giant penis. That's it. <laughs> it's in this map. There's a giant fucking penis in this map. It was pink, too. Yeah. It's straight up cocky balls and, like, chaff and everything. It was right there. Can okay, maybe... Come on, drive under it. I don't know the the uh, the phallic imagery was in the beach part of the uh, the map. This yeah. is the the town part where they keep all the uh, you know sexuality to a bare minimum. There it is. Look at it. It's huge. <laughs> what is the level? The beach level? From, yeah, this one. It's a big old dong. <laughs> well, it's Peach's Beach, so uh, <laughs> apparently it's a nude beach. Well. That's about all the time we have for this week. Next week, uh, we hope to have a lot more interesting uh, moments to share and uh, laughs to be had, or something like that. Always. Of course. Or maybe me swearing more. But it's what our viewers and our, and our listeners, former listeners, now viewers, have come to expect. Right. So until next time, uh, that's Chris Paul. I'm Kyle T. Hayes, saying that was amusing. <laughs>